How should we do this? We started the first... We're, yeah, so since we started the channel, we've thought about maybe doing some longer series, TV shows, mm -hmm. anime. Yeah, we don't actually do movies, but... Yeah. It seems like a good thing we want a cool yeah. thing we want. And to I do. don't watch many T V shows. Yeah, no. I've... We're not in the habit of watching T V shows yeah. at all. Yeah. So this would be cool. And we're definitely yeah. not the type to binge watch. Yeah. Like so... Yeah, like I can only take a couple episodes at a time for Yeah, and yeah. in a culture where there's so much so much of everything is binge watched. Like we people review shows by the season. Mm -hmm. I think it is cool to Talk about some like a mini series, yeah. especially. So should we do the same format where we like do non spoilers and then spoilers? Well, that's gonna be tricky with later episodes. Yeah, like maybe we should just go straight into spoilers and just do non spoilers from when we finish the show. Exactly, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if you want to follow along, go watch Lane. Yeah. This is uh, what is it? Serial Experiment Lane. Yeah, exper Serial Experiment Lane. Yeah. First yeah, two episodes. First two episodes. 1998 anime. Unlike anything I've seen in the genre, that's for sure. Uh, I guess he has to go straight into spoilers. Yeah. So I looked up right now on the on the screen. Lan. L A N. Oh, you think there's a connection there? I think the name is. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. LAN, which is a local area network, a group of computer and associated devices that share a common communications line or wireless link to a server. So from the first two, I mean, I'm really glad. So we, we were wondering whether we should stop at the first episode or not. I'm really glad we watched the second one mm. because I was more absorbed. I entered into the, I entered into like a trance like state <laughs> by the end of it cool. that I rarely get. I mean, the closest I can think of, maybe it's like, this is not really, in Momo, it's more like the pacing and the fact that there is a protagonist that isn't very emotional. Um, I thought of Blade Runner 2049, the sequel specifically. I can see that. Just because Ryan Gosling. But I mean, that one, the, the narrative is so much more traditional than this. <laughs> this is just all over the place. And I wonder... And I think most of it has a lot of significance, like why the whole color uh, words, color with words thing that goes on. And then, I mean, Lane is such a weird character. I don't know <laughs> what she is, but based on the... Well, at this point, yeah, we're like we have no idea. Yeah, based on the title screen or the, the opening credits... She seems to be some sort of idea, like an, like an entity that, I mean, we know that she can probably pass through, I don't know if she's already entered, like, the wire, I don't think she has yet, but she's about to, so Mark has seen part of it, so yeah, he's, so he's I've, thinking about what, what to say and what not to say, I've, he's in a tricky spot. I saw I, I, I saw I tried watching this show a couple of years ago and got through most of it but wasn't able to finish it most not because like I wasn't enjoying it but like I just have a hard time finishing TV shows mm. um, the with staying committed to something like that mm -hmm. uh, and Same. for this one in particular it was it was a little tricky because the pacing's slower and like choosing to watch it like some with some something of this slow pace it can be hard sometimes yeah. for me but yeah. Um, when it's not one sitting like a movie. Yeah. 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 Like if you make a commitment to like watch an entire slow movie, then like you're not making commitment to watch more of it later necessarily. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that it. Yeah. So it's part of the reason why I, films are just easier for me. To watch. Yeah. But um. But the point is that yeah. So it makes not... it tricky for me to like conjecture in the same way. But at the same time, this this is totally different than from what I remember. Really? Yeah. The main difference is that the copy that I had was nowhere near this good as what okay. we're watching right now. Okay. Like this, like I'm so impressed by the visuals, and I I'd never seen the intro or outro before. Yeah. Yeah, because um the copy I had didn't have it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it looks magnificent. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's so crazy. Yeah. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and the sound design is wonderful. Oh too. my gosh! And the yeah. soundtrack. Yeah. It's a lot of range. And there, there's one particular track, I forget what she was doing, but it reminded me of the Ghost in the Shell. 
Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Ghost in the Shell is da, da, the da, da, 80s. So this is like sort of like I think influenced Ghost in the Shell is early from... 90s. Oh yeah, you're right. It is early, early, 90s. early yeah, 90s. Yeah, so this is like a couple of years after Ghost in the Shell, right? Yeah, it is early 90s, you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wonder how much this seems super influential because it came at such an early time. Yes. I don't I don't know how many western or american directors have taken maybe taken influence because some immediate parallels i got were like under the skin Hmm. and uh i mean requiem for a dream but i wonder if aronofsky while while he was exploring satoshi khan especially the beginning of the second episode maybe yeah with the drug stuff i mean it's a very different approach for sure but the dial i mean sure dilating of the pupil is might, might be something that anyone with any experience in drugs will know about but there's something about that that's also another blade runner thing the di- the, the the close-up of the eye that's how mm-hmm. both blade runners start yeah. yeah also the the way they communicate with each other is very interesting and the yeah. way they portray that uh is really cool like it's <laughs> compared to what we just watched right it's like a lot of it is just like they look at each other and it's a cinematography that communicates sort of the subtlety of what's going on underneath. Yeah. But interesting enough, like, because of what information the show reveals to you, it's not really clear what's going on. Mm-hmm. She seems like, so what I gather right now, she seems like, and, and t- later on in the show, she will be more aware of what she's doing and that now she's not aware of her true powers but then there's that ending of the second episode where she suddenly just breaks character and be, be suddenly is aware of everything mm-hmm. which is crazy and then there's like the hallway full of freaking colorful figures like weird cyber figures yeah, yeah. that kind of yeah come through and just show up and I think there was someone in the nightclub at the end of the second episode that reminded me of the... That looked kind of like the dude she saw in the school hallway behind the door. Oh, really? With the long hair and the dark skin. Oh, I didn't catch that. I think that... I mean, I don't know. A lot of the characters look similar. In fact, the be- first episode when um, the someone, another student was crying in the classroom, the student that was comforting her actually looked so similar to Lane. I'm like, wait, is that the same? Is that Lane? Because <laughs> the show could totally do that. Yeah. But I don't think it is. Yeah. And... I've never seen, I've never seen, I can't remember the first kissing scene in the first episode, but when the parents were kissing, I was just so shocked by how stagnant and immobile, like nothing's happening. I was, I almost <laughs> yeah. thought at first it was like a hologram or like an impression of the first couple that was kissing when the girl committed suicide. Like, oh, it's a projection. No, it's the parents. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's just something so off about mm-hmm. like the family and I mean the 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 friend the student friends are just you know there there's something weird about them really but um, nothing really weird about them. Well, there is. There, I, I don't know. I said there's nothing really weird about them, but I yeah. how the the tone is so eerie and off that even though the fact that they're so normal makes them weird. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I can't say that anyone's not weird. Yeah. Yeah, and I want to say the teacher is one of the more normal characters, but then she looks at the chalkboard and just mm-hmm. it just it, it reveals subliminal messages and stuff. Yeah. And, and we- having seen more of the show and knowing a little bit more of what it's going for, um, like the th- like the themes on this like repeat viewing are like really clear to me. Okay. Of what, like I'll I'll hold from talking yeah. about them yet because because we're so early. In yeah. It, but um, like of like what sort of like what the show's exploring. And mm-hmm. they, I mean, I think a little bit of it's clear now. I think like I what, remember, yeah. I have yeah. many, yeah. Yeah, but I'll, I'll not say just Okay, cause... well, I'll say. Yeah. Okay, sure. Okay, so it hit me really hard because social media today really does feel like a separate world yeah. on its own, mm-hmm. a separate, like a, not, not only just, you know, an online community, but sometimes I literally picture it in my head as this physical place. The we like sometimes think about it, like the internet, you know, like like what a weird we we often talk about how strange the internet is as sort of like a place mm-hmm. with memes and culture and how culture is spread. 
And I think even more so than Perfect Blue, this film, like Perfect Blue does some ex exploration of like how it internet affects celebrity stuff. And yeah, that doesn't really get deep into it though. Right. Yeah. But it is, it's you can, more about the, like, you can the... still say it foreshadows certain things, Yeah. Mm -hmm. but this, this one really, 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 really like foreshadows what the internet is today. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I don't think it's really aware. Like, like if I imagine they try to do something similar with drugs, like they imagine that in the future, there will be drugs that are totally synthesized like that. Where they're designed to well, dissolve interesting. in the body. It's interesting because it says present day at the beginning. Yeah, present, present day. day right now. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm wondering if the laughing tone is sort of like. There's a. I mean, the show isn't lighthearted. But maybe it is a cheeky reminder that this is just some sort of like like it. It's aware that. We're people of the future watching it. It's almost like it's meant <laughs> yeah. for the people of the future to watch. <laughs> I don't know. That's just with a show like this, you wonder like, yeah. are the creators actually like buried inside? <laughs> are they like communicating straight, straight at us? You know, like when a show can do that, when it feels sentient. I don't know. When it's, a show feels sentient. Yeah, when a show it feels does something sentient. special. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm I'm really digging this uh -huh. um, this rewatch. I think um, we'll finish it. Yeah, yeah, easily. Easily, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is totally our cup of tea. Yeah. Now um, that we're more. Yeah, and I sort of realize now that um, the visual style and the general approach, maybe not like the overall end effect, but at least like the visual experimentation is the closest thing I've ever seen that comes close to what Perfect Blue does. Interesting. I've never seen anything else. A lot of it just has to do with the similarity of the drawing style. Uh -huh. That that helps. Uh huh. But the experimentation with narrative specifically. Well, narrative for yeah. sure. Which like it's definitely doing it very differently here than it does in Perfect Blue. Mm -hmm. But like the visual style, like with like not conforming to the typical, um, like. Are you talking about more like the way it's cut and the way it? Because so much of the visuals, they're much more glitchy and cybernetic, for lack yeah, of a yeah, better word. Yeah, yeah, than Perfect Blue ever was. Yeah. Um, and it's just crazy to think it well, came Well, it's mostly out. like, it's, it's almost like roughly hand-drawn. I don't think it's as rough as Perfect Blue. No. Well, um, I think really? it's more polished. Really? Yeah. More by polished. Far, I think it's by far more polished. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. It looks far more polished to me. And, like, sure, like, like the human designs does remind me of some of Satoshi, like, Satoshi Khan's work in Perfect Blue. Mm -hmm. But when we put it with the setting and stuff, it does not look... It's a totally di different atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. And for, for that reason, it, I think it feels more polished in a way. Well, you know how I feel about Perfect Blue. That's that film feels wonderfully polished to me. But so, <laughs> but the visual style is it. it it's yeah, rough, it revels but it, in its roughness. Well, it's rough, but it's very deliberate. Right. So for that reason, it doesn't come across. I guess as that's polished. that's a good comparison because when when people are when there are side characters that are insignificant, they he does a very very. Um, very blurry drawing. Like he only draws the outline. Mm -hmm. He or she, the animators, they only draw the outline and maybe like a couple of lines for eyes. And they usually put a gray tint to it. So it's very deliberate, like which characters are more refined. Mm -hmm. So I guess in that sense, there is a similarity. But I, I think they're totally different. Oh, they are totally the different. Visuals, they're even very visually. different. But it's just, I mean, I think we can both agree that both of these, both of these things like have... There's nothing like them, mm -hmm. but if there was anything like them, th th these are like sort of the closest that it gets. Right. Yeah. Right. It also reminds me of like the Ghost in the Shell and Don Hertzfeld ideologies huh. of, yeah. especially since I don't know what happens to the girl who committed suicide. Like, is a part of her actually in the Wired world, or like so? Like, there's this idea of after you die, is there a poss is there a chance that you can store your consciousness or your your knowledge. I mean... Huh, I never connected that with Don Hertzfeld. That's a really interesting comparison. Well, yeah, yeah especially with the World of Tomorrow series. Yeah. And even to an extent, the Simpson couch gag. 
yeah. there's an idea <laughs> of like yeah out, outliving your body right yeah and having your consciousness stay or the consciousness of a tv show in the case of the simpsons yeah, yeah. which is really cool yeah I'm so right now I'm mostly drawing connections to other sci-fi. I guess it's just my brain trying to latch onto something. Right. But I think it's very engaging, and I think the setting. Yeah. I find like sitting here, especially with like someone else. Mm. Like before, it would be like, oh, I'm tired. I'm gonna watch a show. Oh yeah. It's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. the wrong atmosphere to be mm-hmm. watching this sort of thing. But like here, yeah, everything's like, on high like alert. Proper speakers, a big screen. Yeah. Like before, it was just like on my laptop and my in bed. Mm-hmm. like totally not not the right, right, place right. to do, do watch this sort of thing yeah well there's a there's this track when she walks out of her house and i don't know what because every time she sh- she shows up to school or like her friends show up it's always like a sudden i mean everything's sudden all the scene changes are kind of sudden here so i'm wondering what that space in what what that space from her house to school is mm-hmm. it does not seem like the real world because it's like very clearly there are things cut out and replaced with white but i was what i was getting with that is you were mentioning the speaker system that one drone i can feel it like at the bottom of my chair yeah yeah and it's really powerful yeah there's something uh, man. let's go there's a speaker the subwoofer literally right, exactly. just putting it oh, in your chair yeah. <laughs> yeah like i thought the word sterile appeared in my brain when i was watching it but it does not feel sterile it does not feel like it's it's not a void. It's not like devoid of life or emotion. Like I mean, you like can, it's distance, but beyond right. the distance, it's a lot of complexity. Right. Yeah. In my opinion, I think that's the that's the difference between Under the Skin and Blade Runner twenty forty nine. I think Under the Skin, in my opinion, is like has the potential to be totally indifferent. It mm. feels totally disconnected. Interesting. While Blade Runner twenty forty nine, there are a lot of sterile ish environments. And a lot of big wide shots, but the place is very much alive. Hmm. Yeah, and this place feels very much alive. Yeah. yeah, I think it's. I think the dad is someone I'd like to see more <laughs> because of the way he. Yeah, the way, he's very much. You I mean he's like the most obvious, like the way he reacts in front of like the ton of screens, the way he's like hooked and addicted to it. I mean that's. That's the clearest thing out of the entire show that I've gotten so far, where they're just trying to go for, like, the screen addiction. Mm-hmm. Which I'm not sure was a thing back in 1998. Computers were growing. Um, right. Yeah. Something else that, that's interesting, when I took this Miyazaki class last semester, something we talked about in terms of, like, history of anime, like, not just, like, early anime, but, like, early early anime like the earliest that they were doing animation in japan in uh-huh. the 30s and 40s like like what what became one of the main themes in anime was um a lot of its result of the um trauma of world war Two. right so Except in this show in Haosu. particular <laughs> um <laughs> oh my gosh um like it's a very common theme in a lot of anime is the dangers of te- technology yeah. Like like the apocalypse that happens because the robots take over or because there's a nuclear explosion. Like I mean that's the most obvious parallel, right? If there's a nuclear yeah, Akira. explosion. But uh yeah, Akira is a great example yeah. of that. Um But like here it's like the dangers of technology sort of taking over and replacing, you know, human connections and I mean I I won't go into detail just because I have information of the show that you don't, mm. but um it's also the yeah. illusion. It it nails so well the illusion that people feel more connected. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. I've, you know, like, I feel like that's something that only someone who is trying to predict, who, who doesn't live in the current age can pull off this well. Yeah. I don't know, because this, like, you know, the internet is very much a part of our lives now. I feel like if we try to do something that's a deliberately i don't want to say sad right but criticizes it or explores it in yeah it comes same off way. it would come off in a really is, is there anything that does that i mean surely there is i mean it's a i'm trying to think like there's got to be a ton yeah i'm just it's just not coming like i guess i mean we don't really watch a lot of sci-fi modern sci-fi stuff 
Right. Maybe something like Black Mirror does this. Black Mirror or Mr. Robot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which neither... I've seen a little bit of Black Mirror, but I haven't seen Mr. I've Robot. I've seen the first episode, and I really dig it. It's like... Of which one? Mr. Robot. Okay. But it's more of like a hacker dude doing hacking shit. Yeah. And like trying to break the... Yeah, break banks and shit. Just like, you know, corrupt stuff. Which is a little a little cliche. Nothing... The, the fact that this is so surreal and so strange and so avant-garde nah mm, uh, i wouldn't go far as far as to say it's avant-garde nah, no yeah, me neither. but um something that's so yeah like non-conformative narrative yeah i'm just i'm just shocked that i can't think of other stuff that does it like this i mean under the skin is about being human but that's the closest i can think of of a film that just yeah maybe we'll think of more once we see more yeah yeah yeah. Okay, anything else we should say? I mean, I think we can definitely think of more as we th- go along. Um, yeah. 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 I don't know. I mean, I'm ready to... I'm ready to go outside on a sunny day and, like, look at green things after <laughs> watching this. <laughs> No. Go out. There's no green in this show. Oh, you're right. It, you're right. Except when there's like all the colors and that rainbow shot. Yeah. It's very like black and red and tan. Uh huh. Oh man, blue. I just thought of something. The club is called Cybernia. Mm-hmm. I mean, now you probably know what why it's significant, but I'm just thinking maybe that is it club, a reference to something? Well, it's cyber. It's got the right. word cyber in it. Right, right. So I'm thinking that like. Um, that moment where she breaks character and totally becomes aware of what she is and what she's capable of. Mm. I I don't know. I think that that location specifically has something to do with the cyber. Mm. Yeah. Because that is a com- I guess that's the commun- that that's the place so far in the show where we see the most number of people. Yeah. Um well, well, we do have the crowd shots. We do have the crowd shots, yeah. Oh, I was gonna say, since you mentioned like post-apocalyptic stuff, it'd be great if the show ends with the world ending. <laughs> I want that. To, I actually want that to happen. Hmm. Like, if it doesn't, I don't see how. I honestly don't know. Yeah, exactly. And I think I need that sort of pessimism for a show that already goes so deep hmm. and makes me. I don't want to say I'm somewhat depressed because like. A lot of the ideas I do think about a lot, but it's, it's really, yeah, I don't know. Like with Ghost in the Shell, it, it's, it's meant to be concerning and disturbing, but there are still moments when you're like, whoa, that's cool that their fingers can separate and type <laughs> on every key. Whoa, I'm slightly disturbed, but that's still so, what if I had that? You know, with this... <laughs> It's like a place that I can admire its beauty, but I don't want anything to do with it. But I, it, it kind of is, it kind of is. Like we live it. We live it, yeah. <laughs> Just look at this white screen in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at all of these posters, which you can't see. Like, it's all stuff from the screens. Right. I, I think true. every single one of them, except I have two drawings from my nieces. Yeah. That's the only thing that's not from a screen up here. Right. Yeah, I, I, I'm curious to see what the what the Navi really is, like, as a community. Because clearly there's text messaging. But does this community... I feel like it'll be just more of a... It'll be more of a literal community where, like, she could go in and she could see things. She could see other people inside the space. I'm wondering if they'll they'll make the distinction between, like, what we know of as PMing... Like, connecting with one other person like that. Or, like, a community where people can post them. I don't think it goes into that much detail. But, you know, who knows? Hmm. Yeah. I'm curious to see where it goes. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to watch more. This will be fun. Yeah. Oh, I had one other point, but I can't remember. I guess I'll remember it later. Yeah. I think that's good. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Next up, episodes... Three and four and maybe probably. we'll see. Parents, parents feel good with this show. I'm like for six videos. Holy crap! Yeah, I'm down for seven even if we don't group it any by three. Right, 
could right. be more. Yeah. There could be one episode that just yeah. crushes us. Yeah. We don't we don't have any plan for like, or how to how, format how, how, it. how we're gonna group this. Uh huh. So. Yeah, and we we are planning to do a much longer show, of some Should sort. Should we say what? Maybe not yet. Okay. Yeah. After it's actually kind of similar to the show. <laughs> okay. In ways. Okay. Yeah. Man, yeah. good stuff. Yeah, maybe we, maybe after the show we should watch a different show instead. Okay, sure. To sort of, like maybe even something that's not Japanese. Really? I have no idea. Okay, I have I I have something that I could throw at you just for fun. Yeah. But we'll talk about this off camera. Okay. Sure. Okay. Bye. <laughs>